uh, has is um, what are the rules and the challenges we face today and the, the history of the traditional criteria pollutant emission plus the, the imminent to the carbon management and the carbon tracking requirements or the demand and the emission methodology and what's next. So um, this is kind of go off from the SEC rule. However, as if you are aware of the new SEC climate related, uh, climate change related rule, um, it is very similar to the TCFD, the existing the task force of uh, climate related change financial disclosure framework. Um, so with that, basically, you have to review of oh, this is so for the SEC compliance. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are, you know, the operators, but basically uh, for the large filer, this should already in place. You should already be in the reporting cycle starting the 2024 Jan 1st. Um, so what it involved, what it implies, all this, the scope of this rule is that you have to review the TCFD. Uh, well, because it is based off the TCFD, so the SEC scope, the chapter has the first chapter is really about explaining how this TCFD works and what are the risks. And then so also you need to disclose the impact strategy, business model. Uh, let me see if I can do a yes, but the, the chap this chapter C business model, the governance, risk management, financial metrics. Um, so but to us, uh, from the environmental per perspective, what is really very close and um, kind of compelling for us is about how we are going to handle the GHG emission metrics and the targets and goals. The emission metrics basically require you to have all these historical data from the scope one, scope two, scope three, and then you also have to reveal your methodology, uh, the calculation methodology, and the time period of the data that you get to calculate. Um, the target and goals is really about, you know, where your company as a, as a filer, as a registration, uh, you, where you w would need to be as a short term, uh, mid term and long term. And based on that targets and goals, what are the actions you want to take? So what that imposed, uh, well, uh, OK, so I'm going to go a little deep on the emission metrics. The, remember this, the G part, the GHG emission metrics. So what it says is that scope one and two, um, these are very similar to what EPA is already requiring you to report, which is a GHG emission in gross terms. And also you need to calculate the intensity, the intensity by the revenue or by the product. So the historical data are required. Uh, so this is year to year. Now the 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 aggregation we I, I think even though this is this is specifically raised, however, what I know most of the clients are already doing this basically the constituent of the greenhouse gas needs to be reported separately and also ag as aggregate. I, scope three is has all everyone wants to get there for from the SE then you are required to continue reporting right and then if you haven't done that uh, we recommend you, but it's not absolutely required. The, you can give you give an estimate. So the the scope three remains kind of um, questionable. People try to gauge, but 
really because of the amount of the data collection uh, it's very hard for most of the people for today's topic i'm really just going to concentrate on the scope one scope two um, the calculation methodology as i said earlier basically that's what um what triggers this topic this session is how we're going to handle this um, so with all that said um, there is a a com kind of demand a need for a tool that would allow user to measure to the baseline what where are you and so that you can set the target so that you know what are the costs gonna incur because of what what's going to happen or what happened right and so this would also give your company a clear sight of where you want to drive the business if you want to do the emission reduction a different scenario analysis enabled so this what is envisioned um so we would has this envision for maybe two or two to three decades now it started off as a uh, criteria pollutant emission tracking tool and reporting tool um, has been in use for many major uh, oil and gas operators um, so what it is is if you look at the upper part of this diagram it's a real-time emission tracking um, it has a data handling logic uh, if you are day-to-day -day, uh, you know environmental reporting personnel you know it's not necessarily how you calculate it's how you collect the data and cleanse the data and so that's what this is about is you know i get the data i know there are pieces i cannot use i need to e either use a you know, whatever the rule requires you, 720 hour rolling max or, you know, 30 day operating average, whatever it is that you need to put in place, right? So the amount of effort in this, in the data handling is phenomenal, no matter which rule you're, you're bound to. So that is what the traditional envision was about is the data validation and to ensure the quality assure uh, data quality um, it also on top of that it's uh, it allows you to do data substitution oh, wait um, and also it gives you exceedance logging it allows you to do data replay data catch up uh, and so all of these, and also there's the analyzer management piece. Um, so, and also it provides the standard set of reports. Um, so most of the criteria pollutant are covered here, as you can see these cards. Uh, then uh, we expand this to cover, so as you can tell, most of these will fit into kind of the downstream client right because they have you know continuous sems all that stuff um, but then we expanded to use the envision for uh, other upstream uh, we've done cases in upstream and because upstream we also have a very similar uh, calculation requirement on the data accuracy data completeness data you know cleanness and so we also moved to the new framework and so what that enables, well, this is just telling you, this started off as a compliant tool, but it allowed, it, it fits right into the EPA's 40 CFR part 60 and 63, it handles data, it calculates data, aggregates data from the bottom up to uh, the hierarchy level to the highest, to asset, to the site, to the corporate. Um, has extensive reporting capability. Um, so the, the part on the left is really just the verbiage direct, directly uh, extracted from the EPA rule. Um, if I don't know if you, anyone is familiar with this verbiage, this line. Um, so that tells you 
for any of the facility, you have the SAMHSA continuous uh, emission, continuous emission monitoring system, the data has to be exact following the aggregate uh, specification that is every quadrant, uh, quadrants up to hour, you know, how you cleanse the data is all specified in the rule. So, uh, why envision? Um, so we, as you can tell from these uh, different regulations, envision has been used to uh, be uh, compliant to different uh, regulations in different regions. Um, EPA, there's UK, there's a greenhouse gas protocol, there's a Saudi and also Abu Dhabi. We have clients all over the place. Um, so what this does is the automated emission reporting versus you have the manual data manipulation. You have the real-time tracking allows you to do pro pro proactive actions. Uh, if so, I remember that the rule has it. You have to you have to um, record all the exceedance. The, their reason, the root cause, and also the corrective action. So we have the platform just for that. And so what is more, we extended more than that, is that because of the events or the alert given to different users with their access, then they can start taking actions on, you know, things that start, once the alert starting, it will go off to their emails or whatever, their mobile phone, and they get the alert and then they say, okay, well, I know this is where the problem is. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna ask someone, you know, dispatch someone to take a look into it and have it fixed. By doing that, your exceedance duration will be decreased. And we have a client from Suncor in their internal management board meeting, they said because of using this, the, the exceedance duration has decreased 40% uh, for that year. Um, so audit proof this, uh, the, one of the data technology, benefit of the technology is about you get different um, scattered spreadsheet or different type of data source, but you can, you know, compile them into a one data format and then come into your data storage for you to play with, right? Um, so inside analyzer downtime incorporated, that's pretty much self-explanatory. So uh, this is really just kind of give you an overview of what are the main features I've talked about data validation. It's uh, look at the frozen data, missing data, range check, flexible aggregation functions. Um, you can do all kinds of aggregates. Uh, it, it's a it's a kind of um, how should I say a platform or mechanism allow you to build custom build whatever day how many interval, how you want to look at the data of the aggregates you can build. It's, it's, um, it gives you a lot of freedom of doing that. So um, analyzer management piece, data substitution, data replay. So this data replay, I kind of want to highlight it a little bit. So previous, traditionally, people been using this as a replaying of the history data, you know, when Either your uh, data system has lost its signal or some of the instrument has just gone bad. You know it was the, the data coming out is not right. Um, the environmental people has to kind of correct it on it. Or your permanent change from year to another year, you, you need to do some replay. But uh, with given the new, new demand from the uh, greenhouse gas, this feature is also being used to predict the future so that uh, what happens is I know the the correlation between the equipment and the, their 
you know, equipment efficiency and know the calculation behind scene to come up with the GAG. Now, if I were to set a scenario analysis, I know where I want to go with. I could use this data replay with a different set of input to come up with the target. Does it make sense? Uh, OK, so. Alert, alarm, I already kind of uh, touch on that. Um, wait. Record keeping, self-explanatory uh, report templates and dashboard analysis. Some of the standard reports uh, be very widely used are the downtime, exceedance, drift check, uh, and performance summary. And so let me talk about a little bit of, on the carbon. So that was, was in the past or what triggers uh, the, this envision topic. So because of the new rule and then everything, um, so we have added a new module called carbon management. And so this is very uh, the GHG reporting framework centric. Um, it, it does add in the possibility of the carbon cost in this. Uh, we know from EU, uh, ETS, uh, they they shed, they casted the carbon cost into all your you know product or, or your financial statement, basically your shadow the carbon cost, you know, or if you were to trade the, using the credit, all these are in place so that you can calculate how much if I were to do, uh, you know, a, a trade off or if I were to decrease cut down the emission, what's the impact of that? This is still back connected to what the rule wants you to provide, the information you want to provide. And also the parameter of carbon emission, it connects the process parameters. So remember I talked about the, the data replay, but basically the replay before was on the history, now we have the future prediction based on the same uh, same correlation of the process parameters. Um, and we have the machine learning capability to have this uh, calculation, uh, not just on the model that you had previously in the fix, but if you have a, a large amount of historical data, you could do the, uh, the prediction based on the trend on the history data. Some of the use case, um, so this is the one we did um, in UK for water treatment system and has the exact carbon footprint for 15 minute interval. Um, it tracks the scope one, scope two emission data uh, and also use the, the QAQC procedure to do the, uh, the calculation. The other one, the economic analysis, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, there is the piece uh, in that SEC rule that captured, hold on. Yeah, so the carbon offset and reusable energy credit. Um, so this is also, one of the uh, terms, if you have this applicable to your case, and so this is what we did for a client. Uh, so they have the carbon uh, capture storage, and so we had built this piece to offset the carbon emission, including the cost. So you can see all these different from year, year to year, and then you have the power price for the re renewable power price. You have the basically your life cycle thing, your discount rate, your CO2 emission penalty, um, and then also the price of it. And you, with li these little handler, 
you can manipulate and see the impact of what's coming out. What are you facing, right? In the, you know, if 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 you were to do certain things like this one, they use the green hydrogen. Um, the, there is green hydrogen. There is blue hydrogen. How much it would cost for each if you were to blend in with certain amount. So that's that's what um, this tool allows you to do. Um, there's a um, so this one has the top three chemical producers. We have been having a very good relationship, or they have been very loyal to the mission for almost almost 20 years now. Um, so the emission was in all their freeport facilities, and then they have uh, it covers all different equipment from flare to cooling tower, heater, thermoxidizer, mostly on the criteria pollutant. But recently, we have expanded to their Europe uh, uh, site and to report the TCFD and EU ETS. I'll, I'll have some screenshot for you. Just um, this is another uh, very a, a larger chemical complex. It's also used in Vision to do their EPA uh, 40 CFR, and this is actually in a international place. But they also not just use the air emission; they also use the same tool for wastewater tracking, uh, pollutant tracking, and also the greenhouse gas. Uh, right now, we are doing the whole carbon footprint with this in Vision. Uh, using this for this customer. Um, this is um, super major oil and gas customer. Uh, we did the emission reporting per subpart W and subpart W uh, subpart C. Um, this one is a little bit special because it kind of used a different framework. Uh, not many uh, continuous and uh, continuous uh, process data coming is really about the data correlation and compiling and data cleansing. Um, but we, in the end, we help these operator to come up with the um, subpart W and subpart C with the automated reporting tool and save a lot of time, labor, effort. Um, this one is a different type of client. Um, it's they they ha, they are the govern governance piece the regular regulator and so but they require all these industry user to report emission based on the scope one two and three framework so we set up the foot platform for them to enter data and allows them also to do the approval process from when they report up to when they are approved or rejected uh, so this is one of the APAC region. This one is just to show you the dashboard so that you know understand the uh, the the capability of different characterization. Um, they you allow you to do allow you to do uh, by different facility location. Allow you to buy asset site site uh, uh, asset site unit and emission type. Um, this is the Middle East client. Um, they have different different sites. And with the different site, you can see um, their different trend, uh, distribution of the CO, SO2, NOx, and also, um, I think, Oh, I forgot on the greenhouse gas, but the intensity uh, of these calculations are also being done. This is the EU part I was talking about. Um, so they use this to capture both the criteria pollutant and the GIG with historical data. This one is just to show you all these, you know, um, CO2 flow, NOx. It's all combined in here. Uh, with a history trend, 
and also you can do either month to month or year to year and you can sort in by their unit. Um, so this one actually shows you the biggest emitter um, and in, in this diagram you can tell that if you were to choose, uh, if you were to just compare uh, by different group you can do so by uncheck something or check something. So this is the scope one, scope two framework emission inventory. And, um, okay. I just want to kind of capture on, um, so what is really about the emission is that we talked about traditional criteria pollutant. Uh, it, it gives you the possibility of real-time data tracking. Um, the data source flexibility is there so that you can do from um, Excel, you can do, you know, your CSV, even your, um, uh, um, you know, different database uh, backends. Um, it's aggregation can be done by hierarchy level. Um, it's it's tracking by the you know whatever granularity you have at the bottom at from the bottom level up to your hierarchy at the highest level now with the added in, uh, features it's the with the future prediction capability it allows you to do the target setting scenario analysis uh, with your process parameters and also adding the economics analysis with the, all these carbon costs. And uh, I think that's the, what really makes the difference is that most people can do baseline, but it doesn't have the step of doing the future prediction yet. Or how do we, how do we portray this with you know, if I were to cut this emission by certain level, where do I go? So Envision gives you this first of all, the insight of where the biggest emitter comes from. And then you look at drilling down to that, you know, area or unit or asset, then you know what are the process conditions that matters the most and you can play with the different scenario. Remember that little handle you can play with and to see what's the biggest impact and where I can go. Because one can cut emission as much as you wish, but you don't want to disturb or you don't want to kind of um, <laughs> offset what uh, your operation is about, your production is about. So. That's the trick it allows you to play with. Um, I think that is all. And I'm at I2 Cube uh, booth. Uh, so if you have further questions, inquiries, feel free to come and get me. <laughs>